Hello internet people and welcome back to another episode of hashtag Friday Sews. Today is an extra exciting Friday Sews because I'm going to be revealing to you what I decided to make for the hashtag Sew Frugal Challenge. So let's get into what I've been up to, what I've been working on, my upcoming plans, and my upcoming plans include a little bit of a life update. So uh, Sew Frugal first. Today is the last day of the challenge. It's real day. Um, you may have seen my inspiration video for the challenge where I created a capsule collection for a vacation in the south of France. I'll link the video up here at the top in case you missed it. Um, using all free patterns and fabric from only my stash as per the challenge rules. Now as much as I would have liked to make all of the pieces or even like one of the whole outfits that I came up with, I unfortunately do not have time for that. So I decided to make the Mood Society wand flower blouse. Now I still technically don't have plans to go to the south of France, but um, even though I would love to, uh, I still think this top will be a very versatile uh, piece for whatever I do get up to this summer. So let me go put it on and so I can tell you more about it because you can't really see what's going on here. I cut a size 16, 18, which is for a 41 to 43.5 inch bust. I used a navy blue cotton lawn from my stash, of course. In terms of modifications, I widen the straps to a two inch finished width and I lengthen them so they would tie at the top. The original pattern has spaghetti straps and I don't really like spaghetti straps for various reasons. Um, so I wish I could tell you how I managed to adjust the front of the bodice piece to accommodate the wider straps, but I really have like no idea how I managed to do it. It was just like a lot of random Googling and YouTube videos and kind of like staring at it. And somehow it all worked out. Um, I think it must have been the little sewing fairies coming into my sewing room at night and managing to make it happen for me. The gathered side tie part was easier to construct than I thought it would be. So yeah, overall it was um, actually very fairly straightforward and quick to make. However, I do have a few notes about the instructions for this one. They were a little bit on the sparse side, so that got me in two places. Um, I sort of had to make up how to attach the straps to the back piece. Um, attaching the straps to the back just like wasn't mentioned at all in the instructions. Um, there were notches, um, I think that were indicating where they should be placed. Um, but you had to do a quarter inch rolled hem on the top of the black back piece. And so the notches like went away. Um, so essentially, yeah, I made it up. Um, the other mysterious part for me was how to attach the back tie at the waist. The sample in the instructions was made in a print. Um, and so the instructional photos were kind of hard to see like what was going on and the text basically referenced the photos. So I, it was really hard to tell what was going on, but anyways, it all worked out in the end, I think. And the pattern calls for a quarter inch rolled hem for all of the hems. And I actually wasn't sure if that meant a quarter inch twice for a total of a half an inch seam allowance, or if that meant an eighth of an inch twice for a total of a fourth of an inch seam allowance. But anyways, I decided on a quarter inch twice and I messed around with my rolled hem foot to try to accomplish it. And like, I just, I could not make it happen. The fabric, it's so light. It was like rolling the wrong way and it looked terrible. So I ripped the whole thing out and I just did um, a quarter inch twice turn hem. So I think that's basically the same thing as a rolled hem. Anyways, I used the wash away wonder tape. Um, so that made it really easy and it looks so neat and I freaking love that stuff so much, but I always have a hard time getting it to wash out and I don't know why. And so um, after it gets washed and dried, the hems get all crinkly, but you can sort of iron it out and I think it kind of sorts itself out after a few washes. So um, whatever, I actually haven't washed it yet. So I might regret that decision, uh, but yeah, it's done now, so <laughs> we need to just move forward. So that is my So Frugal entry for 2023, the Mood Wand Flower Blouse. I'll be posting some pictures over on Instagram for my official entry later today, and I cannot wait to see what everyone else made. All right, the 
Other thing that I managed to finish recently, literally took me um, like four months to finish, and that is the True Bias Roscoe blouse, which I am wearing here. And it was originally going to be um, a top that I wore for Thanksgiving, uh, like I said, but I didn't finish it until February, so you know, that's how it is sometimes. I cut a size 14, which is for a 40.5 inch chest, and I sized down um, because my chest is like 42, 43 inches um, because the internet told me to. And I'm glad I did because it does seem to run big, especially since my fabric choice, which is this rayon crepe, that tends to bag out and it grows as you sew with it. So sizing down um, was the perfect choice. The fabric is from Stylemaker Fabrics. It was part of my fall fabric haul, which I think I showed in the first video of the year. Um, yeah, so for modifications, I did work on a muslin twill for this one. I wanted to make sure the fit was just right because I spent $16.99 a yard on the fabric. So in the end, I ended up with a half an inch broad shoulder adjustment. It is a raglan sleeve. So I followed a YouTube tutorial for how to do a broad shoulder adjustment on a raglan sleeve. I'll put the link to it in case you're interested um, in how to do that. Uh, let's see what else. I also lengthened the sleeve by three inches because I wanted a longer sleeve and I didn't really like where it hit um, originally on my arm. So yeah, like I said, it took me nearly four months to finish, but that wasn't really because of the pattern. It wasn't hard or anything. Life just kept getting in the way and it's finally done. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. And um, yeah, I don't really have much to say about the construction. The instructions were good. Uh, it was easy to follow. There were some extra tips on the True Bias blog that helped um, and yeah. Uh, it's pretty cute if I say so myself and so I'm happy with it and I'm happy to be done because I don't like having unfinished projects. Okay, so what is next for me sewing wise? It's also a little bit of a life update and that is baby clothes, not for me. I have a new baby nephew. My husband's brother and my sister-in-law had a baby boy last week and I basically went straight to the internet to buy some fabric so I can make some cute baby clothes for the baby. Uh, it is particularly exciting because I have five nieces. My sister has four girls and they already have a girl. So this is the first boy of the family on either sides. I knew exactly what I wanted to buy because I have been waiting for this opportunity to come along and someone finally delivered. Haha, <laughs> get it? Delivered? I wanted to buy fabric from Family Fabrics, which is a Dutch fabric brand. Um, it's known for their prints. They're really unique and cool looking and the fabric is really high quality and all the fabrics are Okatex. Okatex certified and they also have an emphasis on sustainability in their manufacturing process so that's great as well and I've known about the brand for a couple of years now and I just love the style of their prints and I always swoon over them but I've never really had a very good reason to buy them um, and shell out the money for them. I don't think their fabrics are exclusively exclusively for baby clothes, um, but I know a lot of people do use them for baby clothes and they are kind of expensive. And since baby clothes require less yardage than like my clothes, uh, this is the perfect opportunity to make this new baby some cute things. So let me show you what I got. I picked out a selection of coordinating fabrics and I got like a half a yard of each. So I'm planning on like a little baby capsule collection of maybe like a onesie and a romper and I don't know, something else and sort of mix and match the fabrics together. Um, the fabrics just got delivered today. So luckily I can show you. So I ordered from a web, so I ordered from a website called um, Riverside Fabrics and I got these peace sign I chose three prints, um, they're all cotton jersey. The peace signs, these hot air balloons, and um, these bears. Um, they actually sent me the wrong bear print. I wanted just bears, not bears and fish, because I don't know, the bear's eating the fish, and I feel like, I don't know, baby clothes, I know it's like nature, but I don't know, maybe it's kind of brutal. And then I got um, some coordinating rib and cotton jersey for accents. And then I also got this coordinating floral also I can use for an accents. So 
um, that's what I got and they all kind of coordinate and I think they're gonna be really cute and I can't wait to make them I have some brindle and twig patterns from previous baby clothes I've made I think I have the onesie and the romper so I'm going to probably look at her website and find um, maybe another one to add to the little collection all right so that does it for me for this Friday sews my question for you is did you make anything for so frugal and if you did I would love to see it so let me know what your Instagram is so I can go follow you and I can look at it. And so, yeah, I hope you have a really good weekend and I hope you have some fun sewing plans for yourself and I will see you in the next one. Bye.